Hi and welcome. My name is Jared Smith. I'm an architect in the Next Generation Firewall Management Team and I have Veer with me from the DevNet team and he's going to talk to you about the FMC API and specifically looking at creating threat-centric access rules in, in your access policy. So you can really detect those threats and defend yourself against those threats in your network and then how to automate them, which is the really cool thing here. Yeah. So. Thank you, Jared. Um, I'm Christian Veer. Uh, I'm with Cisco DevNet. I'm developer evangelist, and I focus on Cisco security technologies. Actually, um, that's a great way to start the conversation because uh, the power of NGFW is it's very uh, threat-centric platform. And um, so what we're going to see here is uh, how do you configure that uh, policies? So that's uh, and, and how gonna specifically how gonna you do it using APIs? So that makes it very interesting because as you look at the threat intelligence data, it is it is changing, and you're looking at it. You're getting from different intelligence sources the threat data. How can you quickly actually uh, uh, change policy and and actually fully automate it so that you can publish it to most of your endpoints? So. Let's let's quickly jump into it. Um, um, the first thing I have is a simple threat scenario. This is I, I've taken here is the shadow gate threat scenario where a neutrino ex exploit kit X actually uh, pass through through a compromised website, which which basically has been infected with uh, some malvertising, and that neutrino exploit kit actually when it executed, it actually done download cryptic malware, and that malware actually does uh, some processing on on the on the infected host, and then actually uh, send back uh, the encryption codes to the command and control center server. So it's it's a very standard way of attack. It's a standard thread. A lot of um, threads kind of like follow this pattern. So, so how do we protect against this? Is what I'm going to cover uh, using APIs, right? So, uh, quickly uh, moving forward, just to let you guys know that this is if you're using DevNet Sandbox, this is the setup I have. It's very simple. We have a FMC here. Um, and this has a bunch of NGFW virtual machines with it and some uh, firepower devices. So you on the other side, if you're using it at home or at your workplace, you are here. The boundary is internet. You can access this 24-7. Um, it's available using any social logins. This is a great way if you are a college student or if you are trying to learn about security, you are a network engineer, or if you just want to play with the uh, firepower technologies, this is a great way to get started. It's free. You don't have to be a Cisco customer or a partner to learn about it. So uh, go to just developer.cisco.com, and you will be able to find Sandbox there. So this actually, uh, the, the both uh, the web UI of FMC and, uh, and the API Explorer, which comes with FMC, uh, is available to you. Uh, you can write scripts against it, uh, so that is also available to you. So that's a great way to get started on 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 uh, this technology. So um, so this is this is the task list like which we're gonna do now um, in our um, demo. So what we're gonna do is actually uh, we're gonna create an, a simple AC policy. Uh, this will have some default action in which we are just preferring that security over connectivity. Right, so we're gonna basically we're gonna uh, uh, if a user is trying to access certain URLs, we will just make sure that he doesn't connect. Right, so we will not uh, focus on his connectivity experience. Instead, we will focus on security experience. So the second part is to create in that policy. We have to have it needs to contain uh, rules. And uh, so what we're gonna do is we can actually um, create an AC rule and we'll attach to that policy. The third part, which we're going to do, is uh, create another rule where we're going to do a deep inspection of uh, of files uh, which internal hosts are, are 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 downloading. So that's one way of of controlling that malware detection. So uh, let's quickly jump on. Uh, so what we're going to do first is that uh, we're going to actually um, uh, open up our browser and we're going to go to our. Um, learninglabs.cisco.com. It is um, this is the learning lab which is actually explain um, the same uh, three-step process how you use API 
to create a threat centric AC policy. And this learning lab is available 24 7. You can use uh, any social logins to access it. You don't need to be a Cisco customer. If you have Cisco ID, you can use your Cisco ID as well. And it is available on developers.cisco.com. That's the direct uh, URL over here, um, which is learninglabs.cisco.com. So you, you feel free to sign in and use. There is a lot of uh, uh, content in there. There, If you are just trying to learn how to uh, program, how to code, there is uh, Jumpstart courses, which is there, which you can actually use to learn programming and learn fundamentals of REST API. So what we're going to do here is we're going to scroll through. So what it is showing is um, go to the, if you're using our sandbox, it has put URL in there, um, that FMC REST API sandbox.cisco.com. This is the URL of API Explorer. We're going to use API Explorer as a tool here to create this centric policy, uh, threat-centric policy. This explorer actually makes real REST calls, so it's just a tool like a Postman which comes with the box on the box, so we're going to use that tool to create these policies. So first thing we see over here is that we need to browse to, um, to the policy. So we're going to actually bring up uh, the second window, uh, which is our API explorer, and we're going to go to the policy. So when I, when I scroll over here, um, uh, the first thing I get is the policy, right? So on this, I'm going to do post. So I'm going to keep following what uh, my uh, my learning lab says. So first thing it says is use JSON uh, below to create the AC policy. So it, there is a sample JSON which actually gives you a default policy. So I'm going to actually um, go over here, grab this JSON. Um, this JSON, I'm going to make sure that I copy this properly. Everything looks good. I'm going to bring it here, and I'm going to paste it. So one thing I want to do here, just to make sure, I'm going to give it a unique name. So I'm going to say um, um, Veer. Cisco Super Super enterprise corporate AC policy. So, and here you can see security over connectivity. That's what we are, uh, our preference is, and I'm gonna just post it. So while it get posted, you can see it's a success. So it means it went through uh, perfectly. So now moving on to the next stop, the next step is getting AC, uh, the AC policy ID. So the policy just I created, I need to get its ID. And the reason I have to do it is because policy contains rules. So when we create rules, we want to make sure that we have the correct ID, the correct policy in which we will create rules, because policy contains rules. So we have to remember that. So the way to get it is that we just created this policy over here. It came back uh, with the ID over here. This is my name. You guys can see it here. So um, I quickly grabbed this uh, ID. And I copy it, and I go back to my policy. And this is where my um, my rules are, the access rules. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my ID over here, and I'm going to uh, try to access those rules. So the one thing you may notice here is that um, this ID this is part of URL now. So that means in, I am in the correct policy in which I will add my rules. So I quickly switch back over here. Um, so the second part is we're going to create an AC rule to monitor these URLs by reputation, by category, and tell us intelligence. So let's, let's quickly switch back. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is go to my learning lab and see uh, what the next step is. Probably uh, the next step would be to create that rule of the suspicious URL. So what are we going to do is um, we have this JSON here. As you can see, it has different URLs uh, by category. And, uh, and we can actually grab this and use this JSON to create our rule.
So this is what Learning Labs helps you. It helps you to get started really quickly because it has all these JSONs which are actually being created and put there so that you can uh, jump start yourself. So I'm going to paste this. So I'm going to quickly scroll up and down to see if my JSON looks sane. It looks pretty sane right now. And let's see if we post it, uh, what happens. There is a success. Um, it went through. So we were able to create this rule. So uh, the next part of the uh, uh, demo, which we are going to do, is create a rule which actually uh, performs deep inspection on the files. So this is another rule which we're going to add. And so let's jump back to our uh, learning lab, which is our guide. Um, so in our learning labs, you could just say it says create a rule which monitors connection from um, internal host for uh, malware detection policy. So here is the JSON for that rule. And so if I can quickly grab this JSON, copy it, and I go to uh, my um, uh, post example here, and I'm going to just quickly add this. So I still remember, I still have my uh, container ID. I want to make sure that I still have the same policy uh, which I was working on. And I'm going to add this extra rule to it. So first, I'll make sure my JSON look uh, sane. Looks like I got all the, all the brackets as required. So it's a good idea to make the JSON to be sane. And I'm going to just post it. So this actually came back as success. So um, I was able to add this rule. So you could just see that uh, whatever we were able to do using UI, previously, we can do all those cool things using API. So do you have any questions, uh, Jared? Thanks for your well, Yeah, one, one quick one. So, so we, made it, we made a policy. We made, I believe, three rules in the policy. So if I wanted to get, get this active, the, I guess the next step would be to assign that to a device and then to deploy it, just, just Absolutely. To, to, to wrap it up. Absolutely. So I, yeah. Absolutely. You're correct. So what we did, what this was our objective. We created a simple uh, policy. Uh, we added two rules to that policy. One rule was about um, monitoring the URLs. The other rule was inspecting the file. Mm. And yes, so to, for, for it to get effect on your devices, you, you have to actually deploy it. And the advantage with API is this, that once you set it up for one box, test it out, you can actually publish on multiple boxes. And if you have multiple FMCs, you can actually do that automation and publish to multiple FMCs. So I hope this was useful. Yep. And, 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 and it, it's API just makes life easy. I agree. And so that'll save people time and money to be able to automate processes like this. So th thank you very much for watching this video. And we hope that you go visit DevNet, go try out the learning lab yourself on the pod, and see it for yourself and use the uh, sandbox server to do that. Thank you very much. Thank you.